Welcome to my video, Beginning Watercolor Tip number three. Improve your painting with value contrast. There are seven elements of design, size, shape, line, direction, color, value, and texture. And I feel value is one of the elements where um, people fall short on most often, and it can have the greatest impact. It's not that all the elements aren't important, but if you don't have uh, some level of value contrast, it's very, very hard to have an effective uh, composition and finished product. This is an eye-catching slide, and as simple as it is, the basics to achieving uh, strong value contrast in your composition is right there. Generally, when speaking value contrast in a successful composition, it's said that you need to have a light value, a middle value, and a dark value, and I add to that white. So white, light, middle value, and dark value. And you have all that working right here. The splash underneath the brush is a dark value. Down to the left of that is a middle value, and a little bit to the right of that is a light value, and it's all surrounded by white, which in watercolor is the color of the paper, the white of the paper and the light reflection. The value scale or grayscale is normally broken in, down into uh, steps of 1 through 10, and 1 being the darkest value, and 10 being white, and a middle value of 5. In an attempt to keep it very simple, I'm just going to refer to it as a light value, a middle value, a dark value, and white for this exercise. To illustrate this concept, I'm going to do an exercise with four different compositions. They all have pretty much the same drawing, but they're each going to have a different value structure. So the first value that I've already applied to each one of these compositions is a light value. So the top two, I've applied the light value wash across the whole surface, so I've left no white. In the bottom two, I've applied a light wash, but I've left, left spots of white throughout the composition. So by applying a wash over the whole composition in the top two squares, I've eliminated my opportunity to have all four values, light, white, middle value, and dark value in my composition. Now the two squares on the bottom, I've left white throughout the composition, so I still have the opportunity to have all four values, a light, middle value, dark, and a white. When I'm done uh, applying paint to these four compositions, what we're going to have in the top left corner is going to be a composition that's going to have a value structure of a light value and a middle value, and it's not going to have any dark or white values. On the top right, it's going to have a light value, middle value, and dark value, but there'll be no whites. In the bottom left, it's going to be a light value with middle value and whites. And then on the bottom right is going to be a composition that's going to have a value structure with all four values. It's going to have white, light, middle value, and dark value. So now my next step is going to be to apply a middle value to each one of these compositions. So I'm going to start applying a middle value wash around the, uh, the shapes that I have. I like to use leaves in these exercises because they're a simple shape and uh, it's easy to illustrate a concept and without getting caught up in the drawing or the details of the actual sketch. It's just big shapes, that uh, simple shapes that are easy to work around and so that way you can focus on the concept. So here I'm finishing putting my middle value around some of these shapes on the first composition. And I've used a variety of colors, and you can start to see, I've used some negative painting here, but you can see the shapes start to stand out. 
Now I'm going to move on to the second composition and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply middle values. So I'm finishing up with my middle value layer on the second composition. You can see the first and second compositions are very similar. They um, both have a light wash and a middle value wash on them. Here I'm moving on to my third composition and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply a layer of middle value um, tone. Here I'm finishing up the middle value uh, layer on the third composition. And now I'm going to move on to the fourth. So I'm laying in the middle value here on the fourth composition. And it's going to be very similar to the uh, composition on the left because they both have a base wash uh, light wash which has some of the whites left and now I'm putting a middle value on each so they're both going to have light value middle value and white at this point and here I'm going to complete the middle value layer on this fourth and last composition you can see as I've applied this uh, middle value wash on all of these, I've varied the colors a little bit. Um, but you could do this also with just one color if you wanted to. Now I'm going to apply a dark value um, wash and only the top right and the bottom right compositions are going to get the dark value. So I'm starting to apply that here. So I have my darker values applied to the top right composition and now I'm going to do the same to the bottom right. And here I'm putting the finishing uh, details on this uh, fourth and last composition. So now that I've finished this, let's take a look at each one. So here's my top left. Remember now this one has a light value and a middle value and that's it. It doesn't have any white. It doesn't have any dark value. If I move on to the second composition to the right that one I started with the same light wash with no whites I added a middle value and a dark value this third one I put a, a light wash on but left some of the white and I put a middle value wash on but no dark and the fourth and final composition has all four values it has the light wash with whites left on it the middle value and the dark value. So if you look at all four of these in comparison, you can see that the one on the bottom right, which has all four uh, values, the white, the light, the middle value, and the dark, is the freshest and the strongest uh, composition because it does have a, a much stronger value structure than the other ones. I think one of the biggest causes of what I would call a weak painting, especially with when somebody's newer to watercolor, is because they really stop at middle value of the, the paintings on the left. And one of the ways you can check yourself is you use a value scale and you can buy these. I made mine. I have two pieces to this, which I'll show you here. Um, but you take this value checker and you go across your composition and see how dark have you really gotten. If you look at that one there, it's not even close to the darkest dark on either one of those. 
now as I go across uh, these other compositions on the right I've got the dark values however on the top one I don't have uh, the lights and you can take this as a handy little tool um, until you're really comfortable and and have a handle on your value structure it's a simple way to move it across your painting and check yourself to see uh, how dark you've gone or how light you uh, how much light you've left and this is the other piece to my value finder I uh, you can see I cut the center out and that's where I got my other one but now I take this and I can put it on the painting and I can see what kind of value trunk contrast I'm getting from you know the dark value finder against the light edges of my painting or the, the light edges of my of the value finder against the dark edges of my painting you can see as I move this over the bottom right composition I've got the most amount of value contrast if I come back over here to the left side I, I really have poor contrast and it's going to be a much weaker painting with that kind of a value structure this bottom right by far has the freshest look, has the, the uh, strongest value contrast, which is going to give you more depth in the painting. Um, but you can use one of these little value checkers uh, to put over your work and uh, really see, you know, where, how far have you gone with your value scale. So here's a, a example of a painting that I've, did, I've done and I've gone the full uh, range of values from white to dark. I've got middle values, lights, and I'm just taking this value checker moving across the composition and you can see where I've got very dark darks, I have whites, I have lights, and I have middle value. But this can be a handy tool and you can move it across your painting uh, just to check it and, and see. Have you gone from 1 to 10 or are you stuck in the middle and you don't have anything darker than a middle value? Because when you don't have anything darker than a middle value, it's very hard to get a strong painting. In the opposite end of the scale there, if you don't save any of your whites, I feel it's hard to have a very fresh painting. Now I have the other piece of my value finder. Um, moving it across the composition and I made this value finder like I said you can buy these but you can check out my quick tip where I show how I made this I actually made this grayscale using a mixture of um, hookers green and alizarin crimson I don't have any black on my palette I mix my my grays and my neutral so this grayscale is made with a mixture of hookers green and alizarin crimson and I have a quick tip on how to make this if you are um, rather make one instead of uh, purchasing one. And that's my beginning watercolor tip number three, improving your painting with value contrast. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.